O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. And then my favorite line of the song, O come, let us adore him, O come, let us adore him, O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. What a beautiful gift we have. That we're able to come and to adore the Lord. And not only adore the Lord, but also today at Mass, to be able to receive him, to share in the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. He who humbles himself so that we may share in his humanity, what a great gift it is. Be able to receive him and also to adore him, to be like the three magi, you know, so often I think sometimes we can get a little jealous of, of the three magi. We can get jealous maybe of the apostles. If only I could have seen the Lord, if only if I could have adored him as an infant, how great my faith would be. And yet I believe we're in a better time now than the time of the magi, than the time of even the apostles because we are able to come and adore the Lord and receive him every single day. That we don't have to go and follow a star. We come to where the red sanctuary lamp is and to know that our Lord Jesus Christ is truly present in the Eucharist. That he desires to give himself to us. But like the Magi, we have to follow, to come and to follow the Lord. And sometimes these are big journeys, and sometimes that journey is called, I'm leaving the God of the pillow behind, and I'm getting up on a Sunday morning, and I'm going to try to get the children up as well, as hard as it may be. And that can be a very treacherous journey. I know. I tried babysitting my nieces one week, and I said, no more. This is never happening again. But that journey where? That journey to come and to adore the Lord, to consume him as well, present in the Eucharist. What a beautiful gift he gives to us. A gift not just to the Israelites, but to all of us. As the Magi show, he came for the Gentiles as well. So often when I think of Epiphany, I think of that, that journey, though, that the Magi had to make, and it wasn't an easy journey. It would have been a, a long journey, a treacherous journey. It would have been a journey that, well, they encountered Herod, and we know what Herod wanted to do as well. And yet they came, and what did they do? They prostrated themselves before the Lord and did him homage. And they were filled with this great peace that now they have seen this newborn king, not just of the Jews, but of the whole world. Today, my brothers and sisters, I want to spend a little bit more time talking, actually, about how we, too, have this opportunity to come and adore the Lord. And when we do, what's going to happen? When we come to the Lord, especially in Eucharistic adoration, and do him homage as the way that Magi did, we too are going to experience this great peace. You know, I've preached about this before, but I don't have a good memory, so I'm assuming you don't either for the most part. But back in, in 2009, I had the opportunity uh, to go to Ars, France. Actually, Father Josh joined me about five days after I got there as, as well. But I was able to have the opportunity to go to Ars, France to see my favorite saint, to see his body. St. John Vianney. And I was looking forward to, to the trip to about a month ahead of time. And then something that started really, I don't know, getting me a little sour on the trip to the point of the day that I was supposed to leave to go to Ars, France. Uh, when I got to the airport, I just didn't want to go. There was something really holding me back. But I, I, I was able to get on an, air, on an airplane that actually bumped me from one flight to another. 
So instead of flying through Atlanta, I went through Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Paris. When I got to Paris, I went to go get my luggage. It was lost. Not a big deal. It happens to all of us. But for whatever reason, it just really got me even more negative, thinking, why am I here? Like, why am I here? I don't want to be here. This is horrible. Things are being delayed. I'm missing trains. It's just not going well. Eventually, I, I get to Lyon. I take a taxi cab from Lyon, I believe, to ours. I said to the taxi cab driver, can you bring me to ours? He goes, where is that? I said, I have no idea <laughs> where ours is. And if you don't know where it is, what am I doing? Why am I here? And I was just getting down. And I was getting frustrated. I was tired. I'd been up for 30 hours. And I arrived to the seminary at Ars, France. And it's just dark. And I'm doing the doorbell, and I got that great France hospitality of, what are you doing here? <laughs> Good to see you as well. We. Right? Whatever, whatever. And it was just, they didn't want me there. I didn't want to be there, it felt like. They showed me to my room. It was dark. It was cold. I've been in the same clothes for 30 hours. I went to change, and I realized I haven't worn a small since I've been seven years old, so the shirt that Delta gave me was not going to fit, and I was about to have a fit myself. And I thought, you know what? I'm in a seminary. There has to be a chapel here. So I went downstairs, and I found a very small, basic chapel. But in that chapel was a tabernacle, tabernacle where the Eucharist is present. And you can open up the doors on this tabernacle in ours, France, at the seminary, and the Eucharist is exposed. So I did that. And I knelt down, eventually sat down. And all of a sudden, great peace came upon me. Like all of a sudden, all of that negativity, all of that temper tantrum I was about to have went away. I was able just to give it all over to the Lord. And that peace came. So I was able to adore the Lord and let him give himself as a gift to me. For that rest of that, that trip, nothing much changed in the sense of the hospitality. Not too much changed. And I never got my clothes for four more days. But it didn't matter. Because I had the Lord. And more importantly, the Lord had me. And ever since then, I've always felt for adoration. Every single time that I go, there's great peace that comes. I've never left the adoration chapel more frustrated than when I went in before. I've left frustrated, but not as frustrated as I went before. It's not a magic pill. We know this. But spending time in adoration... Adoring the Lord and giving him homage is going to do what? Well, you're exposing yourself to the Lord. So he's exposing himself to you. You're able to grow in a relationship with him. Brothers and sisters, if you want to grow in a relationship with the Lord, spend time in adoration. It really is a necessity. This is such a big necessity that in our school, our students go to adoration. Some go every single week. Some go monthly. But even the kindergartners during Advent, some of them went to adoration. And they invited me as the guest to go with them to adoration. And I thought, well, this will be fun, right? Six five-year-olds, and I go in there with their teacher. And it was absolutely beautiful. They went in. They knelt down. They started to color their rosary page. They were loud. They were obnoxious. They weren't paying attention. I didn't care. They were in front of the Lord. Eventually, their rosary part was done, and it was time to pray. And one of the kids decided he was going to be courageous. He was going to sit next to me, and he was going to show off of how long he could kneel for. Seven seconds is how long he could kneel for. But the whole time he's looking at me, Father Carlson, I'm kneeling. And he knew he wasn't kneeling in front of a piece of bread. He was kneeling in front of Jesus. How beautiful. We make it a requirement for our confirmation students to spend eight hours a year in adoration. And it's so beautiful to see them before faith formation on Wednesday nights at six o'clock. There'll be two or three in there. 
What's even more beautiful is after they've been confirmed and they're still coming to adoration. And this happens over and over and over again because why? Because they're able to experience peace. And so this year, I'm giving a homework to all the parishioners, and it's not overbearing. I think it's reasonable. 15 minutes a month, minimum, in adoration. 15 minutes, that's all we're asking. Now, of course, if you want to do more, praise God. Literally, praise God, right? But if you can't commit to 15 minutes a month in adoration, I say one thing, baloney. That's what I say, 15 minutes. That's about as long as my homilies are sometimes, and it's better than my homily as well, to spend time in front of the Lord. Very practical. Where is the adoration chapel? It's right in back, right in front of the image of Our Lady Guadalupe is the hallway. You go down that hallway, the first door on the right. You're thinking, what do I do in adoration? Well, you go in, and you do what the three magi did. You prostrate. You either kneel, you genuflect, and then you can keep on kneeling for seven seconds or seven minutes, or you can simply sit down in front of the Lord. Actually, today, if you're a registered parishioner, at 11.15, we're sending out an email with more information about adoration, what to do, and everything else you're going to need to know. So look for your emails at 11.15. But the homework this year, 15 minutes a month in adoration. Do you think we can commit to that? Let's ask that again. Do you think we can commit to that? Yes. Yes. Praise God, all right? Praise God, because what we're doing there is experiencing his love and the gift that he wants to give to us, the gift of himself. And so when we sing this song, it's not just words that we're saying, but actions as well. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye, to the Adoration Chapel. Come and behold him, born the King of Angels. My brothers and sisters, O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord.